Good morning. Good to see you today. <laughs> Glad you could make it. And especially we're happy the Haynes are here, Pastor Doug and Nina. They were sorely incapacitated last week, but he's better this week. And uh, we're, it's good to see them and all of you today. May the Lord bless you. You know, it's been a busy week. And uh, today, if we could just focus on today, the Lord's presence. Because uh, all during the week, we've been doing things that we've been responsible to have done. Uh, duties, activities, one thing after another. But, you know, we come here today for these next two hours or so. It'll be a time just to focus on what's going on here Forget about the duties. Forget about Cobalt 19 for a few minutes and leave all of that behind us and just come together like we always do in our hearts. And I know we got to be spaced out and all of those, and we want to do that. That's just a normal, common thing to do. But as we come, we can worship with our hearts. There's no mask on our hearts. <laughs> There's no... No mask on our, our mind, and there's no mask on our smile if we can take these things off for a minute. So we know we got to wear them, and we want to do that. So today, I thank you for all your goodness. Today is a special day. We're going to uh, honor the Haynes this morning with various things we do, and it'll be a little different. And uh, so as we... Uh, Worship, we want to thank the Lord for his goodness to us. And as I pray, we want to remember a very special need. Uh, Debbie Brandon uh, and her family has uh, is very sick. She's got a lot of pain. And she was here uh, about three weeks ago, but she's unable to be here now. So you want to remember her and her family. So... While we, you remain seated, and I'm going to pray a, a, a prayer this morning that the Lord will just uh, abide with us here as we sing a couple of real good songs. Yes. Okay. Uh, we mentioned that, I think, last week. Uh, yes. Okay. Donna. Was that Donna? Yes. Okay. Uh, her, uh, she passed away. It's uh, Bobby, her brother's daughter and he she's been sick for quite a while and she's passed away so we remember the family and bob he's still not well so today we want to uh, go to prayer and would you just bow your heads and would you just call upon the lord in whatever way you do so let's ask him to be with us today lord jesus we come here in a solemn way to worship you. I know, Lord, that there are a lot of things going on, a lot of things happening, and there's a lot of unknown things. We do not know what tomorrow holds. We do not know what this week holds. But today, Lord, we are here. And we are here, Lord, because we want to be here. We want to be in your house, in your church, we're going to sing songs. We're going to do things a little different. But, Lord, we just know that your holy presence will abide with us. Abide with us, Lord, right where we are. Husband and wife, children, singles, whoever. We just want to come to your presence, Lord, in a way that it will just uh, help us to know that you are here with us. Because this is your house. You've already been here. Some of us have come here and prayed a little while this past week, asking you to be with us for this particular time, this particular Sunday. It's the first Sunday of August already, and we thank you, Lord, that we can come together like this. So, Lord, each one has special needs, I'm sure. Each Some may be down, some may be happy, some may just be dealing with issues of life. But Lord, this is the place to come. The, there are altars here as we space ourselves out. There's room to come and pray. And so we want to do that. Now, Lord, I want to pray for Pastor Haynes. 
We thank you for his presence. We th ask you to touch him health-wise. And Nina, bless them today. And it's so good to see them. And we ask you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for their ministry to us the past two and a half years. It's been good. And now, Lord, we ask that you would go with them in their new change of life and a new pathways for them. But, Lord, bless them abundantly because this day is kind of all about them. And we thank you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad you're here. We're going to sing a couple of songs, and then we have um, some things to do to honor Pastor Haynes and Nina. And so let's let's sing uh, Amazing Grace. Chuck can't be with us today. He's still in Chicago. So I'm, I'm so thankful for being able to just say to somebody, hey, can you do this? And um, we have so many people who are willing to step in and do when someone else can't be here. So I thank Pat for doing that. So let's sing Amazing Grace. If you want to stand, you can. If you need to sit, you may. like me we know the story behind this song um, the man was a slaver ran a slaving ship probably made very good money doing that back in those days and then the Lord got a hold of his heart and can you imagine what joy that must have been for him and what joy it is for me. No, I haven't done those things. But sinner, yes, I was. And amazing grace found me one day. And saved my soul. And gave me a peace and a joy that this world can't take away. No matter what. So let's sing amazing grace. And Pat, if you want to get us started and then just fade out. Oh. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Thank you. God is good, and all the time. Amen. 
friend. You may be seated if you'd like. We're going to sing one more song. What a friend we have in Jesus. If you wish to stand, you just go right ahead. 625. Somebody that'll be there no matter what. Somebody you can call upon no matter what. Sometimes they're there even when you haven't asked them. That's right. Sometimes a friend is somebody that knows your heart even when you haven't expressed a need. Yes, that's a friend. They can look at your face and know that something's not right, that you need something. There you go. Somebody who loves us, even in spite of our honoriness, right? They love us anyway. That's a friend. A friend sometimes is even closer than a relative, right? Sometimes. So what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. That's what happens after that amazing grace when he finds you.
How about now? Good? Okay. All right. I brought it. I don't think you can hear me. Sometimes people can't hear me without the mask on. Um, today is a very special day. Um, we do want to honor Pastor Haynes, our friend, our pastor. You know, this could have been a really awesome, big, big old shindig, you know, if this all hadn't have been going on. Um, but it is what it is. I heard these drop during prayer. The Holy Spirit was moving. Um, I just want to, just on behalf of my family, I just want to say that we love you so much. And all through these years, I just got done texting Nancy and Yanessa, and they send their love. And um, hopefully we're going to see them soon. But um, I just think of all the things that, I was secretary at, at Jerseyville and all the things that you've gotten me through in, in business things. I think of the spiritual things. I think of when my sister was, was, was passing away in those three months, how I was trying to minister to my sister and family and how you were always praying and backing me. I think about, um, I think about one time whenever we had lunch and we were fretting and worrisome over our son getting his ears pierced it was detrimental at that time it was big stuff and you said don't sweat it you know what he's got two kids now he's married doesn't have an earring in his head you know so <laughs> it all it all passed away um bigger things than that but but uh always have loved your honesty your truthfulness and your support and you know you you can't say one thing about Doug without Nina or Nina without Doug they're a great team they've always been great friends to us and mentors and um and uh, I know I'm not supposed to probably even be doing this I was just supposed to read this board but but anyway I I just I just hope that you know how loved you are how thankful we are that God created you and put you in our path and um just so much you just don't even know how you know not just pastoring us teaching us things like that but live in your life where if we were wondering about what we should do we could think about you guys' lives and we would know what to do we you were you're such good examples and it's not ending now he's probably got bigger stuff now for you than you can imagine but but anyway so this is what we come up with um this was hanging up here until it fell down and the first thing i wanted to say because we've been through many of these orange you glad to see another candy poster? Ha ha. <laughs> then over here I added a little bit different. There was there was three Milky Ways here, but I could only find one back there. So in Hebrews eleven three it says, By faith we understand that the universe, Milky Way, was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. Starburst, Psalm 147.4, he determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Swedish fish. I might have to get on the floor here in a minute. Matthew 4.19, and he saith unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And that he has with you. Smarties, aren't those like when I went to, used to go to the bank, they weren't ever that big. They're pretty big, aren't they? Ecclesiastes 8. One, I believe, who is like a wise man, smarties, and who knows the interpretation of a thing. A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the sternness of his face is changed. To Reverend Doug Haynes, our pastor and friend in Christ, we wanted to give you hugs and kisses. We're not allowed, though. For serving our lifesaver and for giving 47-plus years in ministry, it is an honor to worship with you and recognize this special day. You are a true man of God. We've been bound together like the three musketeers, and we've had lots of snickers and fun times with you. Thank you for faithfully sharing God's love and truth in the Church of the Nazarene. You are a sweetheart and are extra special to all of us. Happy retirement, Glenview Church of the Nazarene.
card from the fridge. Here, you need a mic. I don't think so, maybe you do. Let me bring it to you. Thank you. You want to help them read these? Please. She has more air than I do, and I only got a short cord, so. As you retire, it's important for you to know that you truly made a difference here. Pastor Doug, throughout your career, you've reached out to others warmly and generously. You've accomplished a lot and given a great deal. I wish you the best as you look ahead to retirement, because if anyone deserves the best, it's you. With love and gratitude, you're going to be the family. Wow, it's a big check. Thank you. Thanks. is good and his love endures forever oh thank you beautiful beautiful i have to try to keep this one the one you gave me one year for choir my kids every year when i put it up at christmas my kids play with it yeah yeah, yeah. okay I so pastor, it. if you want to if you want to sit say some things that you want to open for you to open that up i uh i'm not going to talk much uh I had a message ready last week, and I got it down to three words. Uh, let's see, uh, past, present, and future. And uh, I thought about Paul's uh, final message to the Ephesians. They're in Acts chapter, I think it's chapter 20. And uh, and he, he goes back, first of all, in, in a section there, and I had the had the verses picked out, and he talks about where they had been and what they'd done and what they'd come through, and I began to reminisce a little bit and think about different things and and different ones that have come through here and in the last two and a half years, and and we really uh, we really had anticipated being here longer and uh, seeing a lot more accomplished, but I'll never forget that that. First Sunday, we took members in, and uh, Brother Cecil come to me that morning and said, do you think I need to get saved first? And uh, came down here and knelt and got saved and took him in as a member. And, and that was just a just a special time, you know. And uh, down, it took several in that year. I think probably one of the best years I ever had in my ministry was that first year. And uh, uh, then we've had some... We've had some viruses and different things hit us, and and uh, anticipated where the future was. But but there's the past. But where we are now, I, I just believe God's got you at a. I believe you're at a pivotal point, and I believe the pastor that you call, uh, God already has His hand on him. God's already begun to talk to him. God's already got it in His mind. And he may not know where it is, but God's already doing it. And, and my 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 word to you is, and you know, the DS can't fire me. I've already resigned, so he can't. I'm already here. I've already retired, so he can't do anything about that. But my advice to you is, don't pay attention to anybody. Get on your knees and pray, and let God show you who it is. And it may be somebody you don't even you don't even think about. Maybe somebody that you wouldn't even like. You just probably don't even like them. But but God knows. And, and it may be the person that that will take you from here to there on the other side. It's because remember it was the the past and the present, but there's a future out there, and, and there's some people that are not here this morning in these pews that are marked in blue that need to be here that we're not getting the job done. 
So we need that guy out there that knows how to scratch that surface to get us to get the job done to get these people in. I can just, I love you. You're, you're my church. Some of them are our family and our friends and our neighbors. And they need Jesus. And we have to, we have to have the way to reach them for him. Well, there's my there's my three point sermon. I'm done. Where, what? These these are beautiful. I can't wait to get home and find a special spot for them. I have to hurry and get the kids are coming tomorrow or today. The kids are coming today. Dad and Katie are always and if they're they will watch this, and they are always uh, well and Caleb too. They're always wanting to sneak things out of my house. So I'll have to go home and put these somewhere, glue them somewhere so they don't take them. This one says, count your blessings. Beautiful. The, uh, this one says, um, love is patient, love is kind. And I have the perfect bowl for them to go on in the dining room or in the living room. This one says, uh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And then this, these little marbles in here have our initials on them. That says Haynes, and I know this will want to go, so I really will have to. <laughs> I'll have to tape this one down somewhere for sure. That is beautiful. And every time we see these, you couldn't decide what we wanted to put in it. You should have seen Linda and I standing there deciding what what could fit in there. We we said all we said all kinds of things. Finally, we just decided, okay, Haynes. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh, and every time we see these, we will think of you guys, and and uh, you have a special place in our heart. Does this one need to be open? Or can okay. okay. Right, and the cards are in their place, and the baskets yours too. Can I say it to you with my back of my head? You know, yeah, bald head. 40, 40, 47 years ago today, uh, we started out and we didn't have nothing. But God has been faithful, He's never been a day late. A dollar short, a meal short. We've we've done very well. God's blessed us. We're not rich. We're not millionaires. We just we just gotten through, and we found that the more you give to God, the more God gives to you. You cannot outgive Him. And uh, I told Nina the other day. I said. I want you. To, I want to go get a couple of dozen roses for you. I wanted to get you forty-four roses. It was forty-four years then, I think. So, I, so it's forty-seven now. So we've jumped three years in a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I wanted to do that, and she said, oh, "You're going to do that." I said, "Okay, I'll get you one of these days." But, but you know, we didn't. If it hadn't have been for her. Uh, I wouldn't have made it these years, and I just want to—I want to publicly say I love her and appreciate her. And I'm not very good at the special days, writing in Facebook and all that stuff. I always tried to do it on the day that she was discouraged, or it was a rough day at work, or something. Just out of the blue, just send her a flower, or go get her something. But I want her to know I love her. So thank you. Hey, Marcy. We have a special little thing to show you now.
Good morning, brother. What a bright, sunshiny morning to welcome you on your last day of work. Forty-seven years. It's a long time. You administered to a lot of people. You made a lot of friends. And it's a good time to retire. Forty-seven years is a long time, but I want you to know, 47 times of starting this little speech has been a long time, too. Because every time I've started it, I've changed it in some way or another. So this morning, I simply want to say to you from Captain Joe and Miranda and the three boys that we wish you well upon this new journey upon which you're about to take. You've been an inspiration to us over the years, and we thank you for all the time that you have been with us and the things that you've said and done that have been important to us. Little did we know when you were born that you were going to become a minister, but we are glad that you did. And we trust that you will continue to work in the church with your parishioners, that you shall have good times with them. You have a wonderful family, nine of the two boys and your grandchildren. Always be with them, work with them, and continue to have fun. Now, as the time has come again for us to park, I want to say on behalf of our family again, we love you and Godspeed. Hey, Dad, we just want to say congrats on retirement. We want to say we can't wait to see you. I was thinking the other day of a story a guy I saw, and he said he knew you a long time ago, and he said you loved him in his crazy stage. And that's what I just love about you most, because you love everybody for the way they are, and you love them like Jesus would. Pops. We love you. We miss you so much. I'm a crier. I am so thankful for you as my father in law. I'm thankful for the man that you've given me right here, for you raising him the way that you have. And I have always thought that you have made it look so easy to put God first, but somehow made it a way to look like you put your family first also. And I just treasure you and love you so much, and I'm so glad for all that hard work that you've done, and you've put everything into your your career, and for church, and for God, and for your church family, and for your family, and we love you so much for that, and we can't wait to enjoy retirement with you and be with you and just enjoy the sunshine here in Florida whenever you get here. Stella, you got something to say? We love you and we miss you and we miss you to come here. Nora? We love you so much. All right, see ya. Happy retirement! It's like you always told me, I love you, but who loves you more? Jesus. Hey, Pops. Um, we just, well, first of all, we wish we could be there with you guys today. We love you. Um, and I just have to say how blessed I feel to have you as a father-in-law, but also just um, I'm so grateful for the example that you give to your family, how much you love us and how much you love Jesus and that you share that with everyone. Um, we know that God is going to continue to use you in big ways. Love you. Dad, it has been no secret to anybody that you have given faithfully to the church um, for the last 47 years. And I hope that uh, now you take a break and uh, it will be no surprise to any of us if you continue to give. <laughs> but um, it's our prayer that you will take time to really love on mom and yourselves and just enjoy this time with each other. And hopefully we get to see you every once in a while. So we love you. Love you. Have a good Congratulations. Day. Bye.
Do we have any cars parked out on the parking lot? Do we have any worshiping with us on the parking lot this morning? Make sure they get a bulletin in there. Thank you. Give me a moment. Why do these things always do this when you want them to open? I have greetings for you from Dr. Spruce. I think everyone knows of my deep regard for Doug and Nina Haynes, but just in case there are fewer, newer people, I am glad to offer a good word for them. Doug Haynes was the first person I met when arriving at a district advisory board meeting so many years ago as the new superintendent for the Illinois district. The man was a jewel. Doug Haynes became one of the finest friends I ever had and helped steer the direction of our district at every level. His counsel became invaluable to me and never once did he fail. Nina worked in her own career, but she also served alongside Doug doing whatever was need needed. I mean this from my heart. In the long history of our denomination, I do not think there are better servants, leaders than Doug and Nina Haynes. And Karen and I want to wish them God's blessings in their new ventures, Jim and Karen. I've got just a few comments to make. We appreciate you both. We love you. We're sorry you can't stay longer. But we understand. But that doesn't help our sad hearts and minds right now. I'll never forget the day when I went to pastor and I said, our pastor is leaving are you going to be available to preach for us sometime? And he said, well, not for s several months. He went on, and then he told, told me when he would come. And, boy, I marked that date down. And I went and called him on that date, and I said, are you free? And he said, yes. And I said, good. Glenview wants you to come and preach. And so he filled in for us, and then... <laughs> In February, the board wanted to know if he would be our pastor, and the DS gave us permission to ask him if he would, and he shook his head yes, and we were thankful. They'd been praying about it. They had already been praying about it. Not that they were knew we were going to ask him, but they were praying what God wanted them to do and where he wanted them to be. And so that's we've had him for two and a half years it just isn't long enough. But we want to send our love, our appreciation, and for all you've done for the church. You've helped us so much in bus business ways, and most of all, an important thing to you and to us is your love for God and how you both have worked and you've been here every time and you're always there when you're needed and we appreciate that we love you with all of our hearts and rick and i are going to miss you <laughs> we're going to miss you pastor and nina you've been special people to us it was many years ago I met Pastor Doug. I was pastoring here, or maybe in Granite City. But anyway, he came on a district and uh, pastoring various places. And I first met him, and, I, and something told me that here's a, here's a very intelligent, smart man. He knows the manual, you know? And over the years... As pastors, we have DSs come and go, but he stayed. And if we had a question, we went to that man. 
he was the go-to man. And for not only for me, but for many pastors, because we know you, we'd get a straight answer. We didn't always get one from the DS because he didn't know. He knew. <laughs> so, how many times? And <laughs> I tried to limit my calls to him because I know I was the only one bothering him. But uh, he didn't look at it as bothering. He says, oh, that's okay. What, what can he do? And so we asked our questions, and he gave me the answer, and we went in, whether it was a report or change or whatever it was, he was able to help us and to help me. And so I appreciate that because uh, certain things need to be completed, need to be done, and he helped us get it done. And I thank you, Doug, for down through the years, you've been there for me uh, as, as I pastored. And here's a little story I just learned uh, concerning you this past week. It's new to me, but you have never heard this. <laughs> a lady by the name of Edna Cantor, she can't come because she has a ministry in Granite, and uh, she is a, a, a person that is very busy. But she's a member here. And she called up and she says, I've been coming to church on Sunday night and nobody's there. Well, <laughs> well, we explained to her why. Due to COVID-19, you know, we've had to cancel services on Sunday night. She says, well, I got my tithe. I have all these checks and things. She says, I, I got to get them to the Lord. It's bothering me because if they're, it's in my purse, it's not in the church church and on and so she says I, I says okay well well we'll find out we, I'll try and help you with that so she called back she says can we go to Cracker Barrel and I says when she says tomorrow and I said she says okay well she says I got all these checks I want to pay my tithe and I just don't feel right about it and I says wow we as pastor wished other people felt that way. <laughs> but so we met. We went to Cracker Barrel. She gave me her tithe. And then she called me yesterday or the day before. And she said, this is what she said. She says, is pastor, is he going to continue those devotions every day? I says, well, I don't think so. I said, I don't know for sure, but I don't think so. She says, well, I have recorded about 13 of them. You know, every, every so often I go back and I re-listen to some of his devotionals. So I think that's a compliment to you. It's going to make you happy that even though you're retired, your message goes on and what you said on the phone and those devotionals meant, meant a lot to her because... She's a person that dearly loves you and wishes they could be here. And so I want to say that you've been a friend to me, both of you, uh, more than a friend. I see you more than I do my family. You know, that's like two, three times a year. But uh, we talk a whole lot on the phone. And so I'm, I'm glad for that. But you are my family. You will always be. If you're around here, wherever, we'll keep in touch. And I want to say that I dearly love you too. You've been my friend for so many years, and you're going to continue for the rest of our lives, <laughs> whatever that is. And I know many of you people here, you have things that maybe you want to say. So uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I don't know how we're going to go about this, but for you people that... Uh, uh, we are up front people. We got things to say, but maybe you would like to say something. And if there's, if it's possible, I would like for you to maybe just step right up here where you can not look at the back of him, but the front of <laughs> Brother Haynes. And maybe you have a, a word to say, uh, something short, uh, because maybe there be a lot of people. We still have a little time left, uh, and uh, uh, it would be a, a great appreciation 
and for you to show your love in this way to these two wonderful people that's still serving the Lord. They're saying they're retired, but, you know, you do not quit ministry. It goes on and on and on, and you'll continue to serve him in that way, and you'll continue to pray for us. Would there be anyone who'd like to step up here? And I'm asking you to come up here. There's a reason for that. Come on, Bill. There's a reason for that because this is on Facebook or something. And uh, so, and here's our first one. Hi, Bill. Uh, when you walked in, I saw you. And you know who I thought of? Your dad. <laughs> Your dad. Your dad passed away. A tremendous man, a, a blessing to Glenview. And so, what do you have to say to me? My dad, I thought a lot of you, I thought a lot of and you still do. My dad did a lot for the church. He built Sunday school downstairs, Kevin's downstairs. I tell his boss to ask him for overtime. He said, no, I don't want it. I got work to do. We do. I'm working at the church tonight. You know, I just can't compare myself to him. I had to have cancer and get down to my knees. I've done so many things wrong. So many things I ain't proud of. And it took cancer. Get me down on my knees. I wish I didn't have this have this such cancer. But it brought me to God. And I really didn't need that. Everybody needs to be brought to God. I just wish I could compare myself to my dad, but I can't. Thank you. Bill is like many people, he's suffering from cancer. I didn't expect him to be here yet, but he is. And he and his wife uh, have been through here, and we continue to pray for you, Bill, and your wife. And we thank you for your your great dad, Jim Causey. Anyone else could? Catherine? Oh. Up there behind you. Oh. Behind you. I Chuck on the phone. Some, who's behind me? <laughs> so we're, we're, okay. We're going to try Chuck's on the phone. He's going to try to say something. We're going to try it. And if it doesn't work, then he sent me a text to read to you. So we're going to try it. I got my you got your phone? Okay. okay Let's try it. There's another person who you, you've left your mark on. That's Chuck Wiggin. You've done for him what I couldn't. I tried to get him in ministry for oh, 35 years, but 
Now he's going to, he's farther along than he's ever been. And one of these days, you know, we'll all be invited to his ordination if COVID's not around. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Here comes someone. Long time member of Glenview Church. Long before I came here, 38, 39, 40 years ago. Here you go. Yeah, I've been in this church since 1958. <laughs> a few years. Um, I can think of a lot of things I want to say, but I'll try to condense it a little bit. Um, back years ago when I was church treasurer, if I had a question uh, about, you know, the treasury or whatever, I'd call pastor and he'd say, call Doug Haynes. He'll have the answer for you. And sure enough, I can't think of a single time that Doug Haynes didn't have the answer for uh, for whatever was going on. And uh, since he's been here, I've learned to very much appreciate his business sense. So in that, that's one good mark for a pastor, that he knows he's more, he's more than just a good man and a minister. He's he, He's smart. He's got the knowledge to carry through. And another thing, I we would go, I was delegate to district assemblies a lot of times, a lot of years, and uh, I noticed everybody, if there was a problem going on or what was the proper thing to do next, this man had the answer. That's who everybody went to for the answers, and there was Nina sitting right there beside him, and she was just helping him out for all she was worth, and uh, so. That enhances what Pastor was saying. But since you've been here at Glenview, uh, your sermons have been right down the line. You preach the Bible. You te preach the gospel the way I know it and the way we should all know it. And your, less, your sermons have been enriching, edifying, uplifting, and scolding every once in a while if it's needed. I've, I've, there have been times I've been hit. I thought, oh my goodness, maybe I need to work on that, you know, and uh, you've been encouraging. Oh, a couple of years ago, I was scheduled for surgery in St. Louis, and uh, in order to be there early in the morning, we're not early risers, never have been, but um, we even spent the night at a motel over there so we could be at the hospital early enough in the morning. We got there and Doug was already there <laughs> to see us through. He was already there, prayed with us, I think twice there that, that spring and uh, I don't know of anybody else that whenever he they've needed him, if it was if he was physically possible, if it was physically possible, he was there for you and praying with you and for you. And uh, so as far as I'm concerned, you guys are the consummate <laughs> pastor and wife. And we love and appreciate you. <laughs> and I know he loves ice cream. We've had a lot of good times. <laughs> A lot of good times eating and uh, sharing that way, too. Thank you, Linda. That's very touching, so true, so real. God bless you. Anyone else would like to I just come up here? Here comes one. We're thankful that people have fond memories of you. I want to thank you both for all you've done for me and prayed for me. Not only you, got the two best pastors ever I know of. And Pat and Nina, I tell you, I love this church. And we all love you. And we're really going to hate to see you go. But, and your family. We've met only through years and all that. So, you know, God bless you. 
and I hope the best for you that God can touch you and heal you and you've done a lot of praying for me and I thank you even when you couldn't be there you would send Rick, Pastor Rick there to pray with me at the, my bedside in the hospital and you know I cherish this church so much and I just want to say my heart goes out to you and we'll, we'll all miss you And we'll continue our prayers for, you know, he's suffering. His mom and dad was a great part of this church for many years. And uh, they've left their impression on the church and he left him here with us. <laughs> and so God bless. Here's Becky Seaman. Hi. Um, I have to say first that I do regret that I did not get to know you more personally than a lot of the others did, but you know, you, that doesn't always happen with every, every member of a church. But I have to tell you, um, I compare everybody to Pastor and Pat, and, and you know, we've gone through a couple of pastors, and, and, and I said, in my mind, the bar was really high for who this church needed, and you guys hit that bar in my head. And um, not that my opinion matters, but I think the thing that really struck me the most, and there's a lot of you, not, well, maybe not a lot, but there's many of you in here who know the struggles that I've been through in my lifetime and the things that I've overcome. And my faith has never, ever wavered. My, um, my love for God has never, ever wavered. But at times, my connection with God is like a, a telephone that's on the fritz, you know, Sometimes I lose that connection, and when I do, it's like, you know, I start getting back into my what I call my stinking thinking, my negative thoughts, my bad attitudes and stuff. And one of the things that I just love about you, Pastor, is that you would make me want to cringe down in my seat. And that's what needed to happen. There are too many pastors out there who are teaching all love and sunshine and everything in the world is beautiful and blah, 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 you know, just because Jesus loves you, but it's more than that. You know, you have to hit people where they live, and you have to hit people where their sin is and where their negative attitudes are, and and you hit me really good a few times, and, and I appreciate it, and I'm, I mean, th I'm not joking about it. I, I needed that. I need somebody to keep me accountable, and your sermons kept me accountable. You didn't sugarcoat it. You told it like it was. And then, you know, I would say, okay, Lord, he's talking to me. You know? And it was like I needed that. You know, you're, you're way up here, and I just love you, and, and I'm going to miss you. But I pray that you two have an amazing, amazing, health-filled retirement time. So that's my biggest prayer for you. You're going to be sorely missed, I know, by everybody here. I feel you were what this church needed, and, and I love the vision that you brought to this church, and I hope we don't lose that vision. So you, I mean, you started talking about, you know, filling the pews. That's not unreasonable, like you said. That's a real reality, but it's up to us, and it's up to the Holy Spirit working through us to make that happen. So God bless you both. I love you, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate you making me feel really bad. <laughs> Bad in a good way to help you. Good yes. Yeah. If anyone else wants to step forward, so you'll be on camera. Anybody else here? Come here. Thank you, Terry, for coming. You've been a lifelong friend of this family, haven't you? I can remember when Carol and I first became Christians and we'd go up to Nazarene Acres to assemblies and stuff and our pastor was up there and he's this great big guy and kind of intimidating and uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you once you got to know him our pastor passed away in Jerseyville and we really got to know Doug and I then and uh, he brought us there a lot uh, we went out to eat and been to concerts with Nina and, but I remember Doug when we moved to uh, we, we transferred to Godfrey and I was working my schedule, and I would I wouldn't able to make some services, and he took the time out, him and, Reverend, and Mr. Schatz, 
And on Saturday morning, we'd meet every, just me, us three, sometimes just two of us. And we had a prayer meeting, just us. And we took the time to do that. And uh, he's really a giving person. Uh, like Becky said, his sermons, I mean, sometimes that's what we need. They're tough. But that's what, that's what we like about them. Uh, I don't mean, Carol, and we thank so much of you guys. And uh, we're going to miss you. But you guys deserve some time. And we hope you guys have a good life together the rest of the time. Thank you. Amen. One of the things you have given us is this family, the Sharts. Terry and his family are, are here, and we hope you folks stay around a long time, <laughs> even though uh, people talk are speaking about Doug, Doug and Donna, if they're going away. Well, they're not really going away. <laughs> they may take some time to go places and do things and while transitions take place and here at Glenview, but they're going. I believe, if I'm not speaking out of turn, you're this is going to be your home church, isn't it? And we're happy for that. And we want that to be. We, we wouldn't want that to ever go away. So thank you for what I heard. And so to ease some of your mind, uh, yeah, they're going to be around, hopefully. We're going to use them. We're going to love them. They're going to help us. And I think if you ever need them, there they are. <laughs> Call them out. Okay. Pastor and my mom. And I'm just one of those people too that if something comes up and uh, you know, last minute you need her, she's she always been there. Um and she she yeah, she always acts like nothing's a big deal. You know? I don't know if she feels like that on the inside or not, but always on the outside, oh that's no big deal, that's no big deal. Okay, yeah. You know, she's leading the choir and we're failing miserably. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, it'll be fine, you know. Or we'll just cut that out or we're just not. I would be on my ear, you know, thinking, oh, my goodness, this is so terrible. But Nina's always says, oh, it's no big deal. It's fine. And so I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, but that doesn't work for me. So. <laughs> But, you know, I appreciate that because that's not me. I am the ultimate cat on the ceiling, you know. Um, I'm strung tighter than two drums. And so it's uh, it's nice to be around people. It's like, oh, that's no big deal. Okay, that's fine. We'll do this. Um, but I have grown to appreciate Pastor and, and um, Nina so much over the past couple of years. And... Uh, at a time when we needed somebody to come in and say, it's okay, you know, this is going to be okay. Um, because we we needed that solid foundation um, to kind of get us back on track of, it's going to be okay. And um, I know that I have watched Pastor many a Sunday here of late and I have been concerned for his health and um, in fact a couple of times I have even mentioned something to him and of course he's just like oh it's okay it's all right you know and I kind of expected that but inside I was thinking oh my goodness you know are you okay and so I just wanted you to know that I for one I'm glad that you're going to still be around. And I was probably not the first, but I was one of those saying, now you don't have to leave here. <laughs> you can still come here. Which, does that sound familiar, Pat and Pastor? <laughs> I, first, thing, first thing I said to them was, you don't have to leave here. You know, this is your home. This is where you belong. We don't care. You know, whoever comes in here after us, we're just going to say, you don't have a problem with this, do you? So... We're not even going to ask if they have a problem. We're just going to say, you don't have a problem with this, do you? But, and I did, didn't I? Wasn't that one of the first things I said? <laughs> was, was uh, my, my very first questions was, uh, you don't have a problem with that, do you? <laughs> so, and of course they didn't. And, and Pastor and Pat are just part of this church. That's just the way it is. You know, 
and, and it always will be that way. And we're hoping the same thing for Pastor and Nina, that this is just your home. This is just where you belong. And of course, if the Lord has other plans for you, we, we understand, but we want you to know that we love you. And I, and I want you to know, Pastor, how much you helped me when I was caring for my mom. And um, I would come to you, I'd come to Nina, uh, who, and I knew you had been through it. And I would say, this is what's happening. And, um, you know, I, she wouldn't use her walker. And I came to Pastor one morning. I was so upset because she had fallen a few times. And I said, she will not use this, you know, unless, unless I put it in front of her. And he said to me, she's been walking around for 80 years without that. She doesn't think to use it. And it, I got to tell you what that did for me. That, that just shed a new light on everything. And I thought, you're right. She doesn't even remember that she needs it. And so sometimes just little bitty bits of treasures that you put into someone's life. I bet you if we had time, we would, could fill up the rest of the afternoon with people talking about those little treasures that you gave to them in their lives. And so we just want to know that, we want you to know that you're appreciated, that you're loved, and that you will always be a part of Glenview, always. She brought up a point. Uh, you know, when the next pastor comes on duty here, uh, because I'm an ordained minister in a church, and he is an ordained minister in church, it's just, I use the word protocol for him to accept us. He may not want us. I, he may say, hey, we may get our walking papers. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Things, but uh, we hope not because we love you. And uh, this is our church. So, uh, but that is something that will come up. And uh, so we, we kind of, I'll wait to see what happens. So anyway, anyone else that has a word to say about our pastor? This is anything, anyone? Okay, come on up here. No, he's, he's already been up. <laughs> he. I am very new here, but I'll tell you what. When I started talking to Carolyn and coming to this church, I never met a nicer group of people and a more friendly and a welcoming group than the people in this church. And I was going through a really, really hard time. And Carolyn was always there for me every step of the way talking about Jesus and the Lord and you guys and how wonderful this church is. And I said, you know, I'm not ready. And she just kept coming over and talking and being so sweet and so wonderful. And I know you guys were praying for me. And uh, I, you guys don't know what I was going through, but you changed my life, every one of you, even though you didn't know you did it. With her help and God touching me through you and you at the concert, <laughs> you guys were so much fun. And uh, every one of you made a change. So when you say that God touches the next person that's going to come in here and talk to you guys, you're not kidding because you guys have all touched my life even though you barely know me. But I think you're all just wonderful people and I wish you two nothing but the best. I absolutely love your sermons. So keep talking to people and keep doing whatever you guys do because it works. It really does. Could I have your, what's your first and last name? <laughs> How about my first name? Tina. Okay, Tina. So everyone, this is Tina, and, she, and the Sharks are responsible for you coming. 
and and we're happy for that. J just think, in in multiplication, if each of us would have won just one family like she has, we'd have three times <laughs> as many people here. Uh, but nonetheless, yes, we are. There's something she touched on as well, and I don't mean to be talking too much, but you that come and go Sunday after Sunday and talk on the phone to them, you never know what goes on behind the scenes. What she said, she, they were helping her. You didn't know that. There's a lot of people. Like Becky said, you were helping people behind the scenes, and we didn't know it, but their ministry, it, it's not a ministry that uh, everyone has to know what's going on, but it's going on all the time. Down through the years, we have co-pastor and, and him, he, he has worked diligently helping people all the time, and no one knows that, but God does, the Lord does, and we we're thankful for those times, and that's what pastor's all about, and that's the work we do for you. Well, yes, uh, Nina is going to sing. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. You don't have to be a member here. You. Love the Lord. That's all. That, that I do. Thank you. Y'all Y'all don't know me. My name is Dawn. I just want to say I look in the mirror every morning. I see this face isn't very pretty. Do these earrings help? Because I, I was going to church this morning. And I thought maybe some earrings. You know. <laughs> they don't matter. Oh, no. I've done that. Um, my my born-again roots are from the uh, Collinsville Church of the Nazarene, February 19, 1989. Uh, Riley Powell and Karen were there for me. Cortez might have been there that day. Um, you all were not there then, but through my connection with the Collinsville Church, I was blessed to come to know Nina and Doug, and uh, just just down through the years have interacted with them. Um, I was there 20-some-odd years. Their, their uh, son, um, what's his name? Thad, let's see. <laughs> Pastor Thad Man, I called him. Um, sweet as can be, if you only knew Thad, you'd know he came from good stock, you know. Stellar good people, so just the years that I've managed to have the Haynes in my life, even if it's been an off and on period, it's been a, a, a blessing and a privilege for me. Um, I came here for your revival services uh, with uh, uh, Sue and Tim Young, and that just kind of, I guess, rejuvenated my heart, rekindled my heart, my, my passion for the Haynes family. It's just good, kind, stellar people, and um, their love for God is always shown. I mean, you just, you're very shining examples. You're very caring, very considerate. I, um, I grovel, I grovel to that. You know, anyone could walk in your way, they'd be following God. So thank you for the example that you've been and the love. And just since I did come here for revival, and Nina has been real careful to stay in touch with me too, just very sweet. So God bless you, Godspeed. Enjoy your retirement years. Thank you. Don't thank let her get away. <laughs> Thank you right, for the Rena. She grew comment. up on the same street where Rena did. <laughs> Ruthie had asked me to sing um, last week, and I had, as I've been cleaning, I've been going through things and trying to purge and get rid of stuff and. Um, Wow, after 47 years, you can accumulate a lot of junk. And uh, as I was cleaning through my music, I ran across this song. And uh, I asked Chuck a couple weeks ago, I said, would you like to have all my music? Uh, and Thad had taken what he wanted out of it. And I had some 47 years of accompaniment tapes. And uh, he said, yes, I want it. So as I was going through looking at them, this one I just couldn't give up. I couldn't, I had to hold on to it. And as I was thinking this morning, uh, it's 47 years ago today that Doug took his first church in Vincent's, Indiana, in a little church. Um, and I remember as 
uh, we didn't get married until October, but as a 20-year-old uh, girl that knew nothing, um, a spoiled rotten, <laughs> I was, uh, that knew, did not know how to cook. I knew nothing about cooking. Um, I knew nothing about taking care of anybody but myself. Um, my mom and dad spoiled me, and you can ask my brothers and my sisters, they will definitely tell you that, that I was spoiled. But how um, we lived in that parsonage and how I learned to be a pastor's wife, um, and a lot of it was because of him. Lots of prayer. As I was singing this this morning, we were crying as I was coming to church. This is my testimony today. This is how we've gotten through for 47 years. It's not on our account. It's nothing that we've done. It's through God and his presence and his Holy Spirit. There's been times that I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't know how we were going to make it. I didn't know financially how we were going to make it spiritually. Our kids grew up just like your kids did. Our kids had struggles just like your kids did. And uh, we prayed many times on our knees in the middle of the night for our children. And now we still pray for them. But it was in the presence of God that he came and said, it's okay, you can do this. You're going to make this. You're going to make it through. So listen to the words of the song because this is my testimony today. And I love every one of you. We, are, we plan to come here. We won't come a lot until you get a new pastor and get settled in. But we will, we're not going to go away forever. Uh, we're still going to be in the area. And you still have our number and you can still call.
first got married she wasn't much of a cook but I'm going to tell you something uh, this lady can bake the best strawberry rhubarb cobbler you've ever tasted because I've got to taste it and I've had a few of them and it's gr the best ever and we're ready for another one if you ever want to <laughs> do <it with> that <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay all right our hearts clear, okay. We're going to go with a closing prayer. And Pastor, all these compliments. Sometimes I hate that we have to go to hear all these compliments. And, but it's nice to continue these kind of compliments to them down through the years because so often they need it. Maybe it's the right time to do it. But when the Lord impresses upon you to just compliment, tell them I'm praying for you. You do it. There, there are friends. There are Christian brothers and sisters in the Lord. May the Lord continue to bless him. Can I take the you sure can. Father, we thank you today for your love, for your mercy for your goodness, for your blessings. Lord, you are our everything. Lord, we're thankful back there at, uh, at an altar of prayer. We gave you everything in our lives yes. when we were just a kid. And Lord, through the teen years, we was in and out and up and down. And But you never gave up on us. You've seen us through college years and through our married life now, Lord. And down through our years as pastors, you've been faithful. You've never failed us. You've always been there. And Lord, this morning, we just want to say thank you. We want to say we love you. We pray for our church today, Lord. Lord, these are, these are our family. These are our people. And Lord, we pray today, Lord, your blessings upon them. We pray, Lord, that in the days ahead, oh God, that you would open the door windows of heaven. We pray, Lord, that you'd pour out the blessings upon them, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you'd cause the uh, Glenview to be a bright and shining light on the Illinois district and throughout the denomination. We pray, oh God, that there would be many boys and girls and men and women who would come to know you as Lord and Master of their life. Help us to be faithful to you, Lord, and love you and serve you. Now go with us, Lord, from this sanctuary. Keep your hand upon us today. Give us safe traveling mercies. Bring us back, uh, uh, I guess, Zooming for Bible study on Wednesday night, Lord, or whatever it might be. But be back on Sunday to worship you next Sunday, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. Thank you. You are liberty. God bless you, brother. Love you. 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 Love you.